a giant news blitz coming up at the bottom of the hour. Gigantic. Key audio clips, video clips. National TV saying, man, we really need to be hit by Al-Qaeda to get the American people to go along with this new world order. In fact, let's pull up some of those old articles. Headline, columnist says well, we need another 9-11, or 9-11 was good for America. I want to have some of the background stuff. This is a theme. You can also Google uh, Pentagon uh, generals. Pentagon PR generals, the retired generals who it turned out were secretly on payroll, in an audio tape with Rumsfeld saying, 9-11 sure helped us. We sure need another attack. Without that, we can't have our new world order. So that is coming up with a lot of other news as well. Daniel Miller has gotten some uh, national news coverage. He's the president of the Texas Nationalist Movement. Now, I, I want to be clear. The national media has said that when I call for states' rights, Ninth and Tenth Amendment, who constituted the federal government, it's out of control, uh, now dominated by foreign offshore corporations. So we have to get control of the feds. But I also see the globalists, they create global regions and then balkanize within the regions the original unions to weaken the original governments. They don't want national governments. They don't want sovereign governments. They want to balkanize and break those up into smaller pieces in larger regions. This is the great game, divide and conquer, balkanization. So again, big global new regions where big global authorities control them, but then they're broken up. Now, I'm obviously had family, the Texas Revolution, my family, the heirs family, raised Colonel Travis's son, and they were in the Battle of San Jacinto and all that stuff. And I love Texas. And, if, and, and the U.S. doesn't really exist anymore. It is the fall of the republic. You can really say it's pretty much gone. They pass all these new bills for socialized health care and green taxes and carbon taxes and hate speech laws and uh, federalization of all water above ground and below ground. All that's happening right now. A total blanket amnesty. Then you might as well have Texas break off. But, again, that'll probably be dominated by some thugs. Whenever you start seeing Perry start saying he might want secession, and then people connected to black ops saying it, you got to look out. Now, I'm not saying the folks pushing for it aren't great people, and, and, and I think it's their right to secede if Texas want to do it. I just, as a Texan, have a right to, to say, I want to look at this closely. Also, if we're going to have secession. I think the Republic of Texas did it wrong. People announcing themselves presidents from West Texas. And if somebody had a bass boat, they would call themselves admiral. And I'm almost not joking. The people in military outfits and weird, you know, their attaches running around. You know, uh, there were no privates in this thing. It was all just a military president uh, and, you know, really pretty ridiculous in my opinion and, and then the republic of texas people get mad because i i wouldn't salute them i'd be in an event and they'd show up festooned with five stars and i wouldn't bow to the emperor and i would then be bad uh but um yeah you know, i mean if it was a famous indian fighter or something who'd fought with uh president jackson like sam houston and of course he just called himself a general at first and later got elected and they had an election so, so, I mean, you know, it, it, again, will the media make us look ridiculous through all of this? Let's talk to Daniel Miller, and he's the um, president of Texas Nationalist Movement. I'm glad he's the president of the movement and not announcing himself the president. You don't have any guys in bass boats, do you, announcing themselves as admirals? No, we, we don't have anybody uh, that are announcing themselves as admirals, but I would uh, guess that we probably have quite a few bass boats amongst our membership. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, well, listen, I mean, I've seen you on TV. I think you're a great guy and, you know, articulate and, and well-spoken instead of guys spitting tobacco, announcing that the president, you're supposed to kneel to them. Total insanity. Tell us what's going on. Tell us about your movement. Well, Alex, you know, we are we are the Texas Nationalist Movement, and we're dedicated to securing and preserving the cultural, political, and economic independence of Texas. And, you know, for anyone who's been listening to your program any length of time whatsoever, they're going to understand exactly why it is that Texas wants to stand up on its own. If we're going to preserve those things that made the Constitution great, that made uh, you know the United States of America great, then this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to establish Texas as a bastion of freedom and independence and then work our way out from there. Well, if secession was done as limited for reentry into the real union when it was reestablished, that would be better. Bill of Rights, Constitution, arrest the governor, arrest the bankers, you know, not let them run it. And then we got our own oil, 
We've got everything from swamps to pine woods to prairie to farmland to mountains. This, 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 you know, Texas is what as big as France, uh, what, uh, the eighth biggest economy in the world. California is the seventh. And it's about to totally implode. I agree. If we're not going to fall to the parasites like California, uh, if it was done right, it would be a good thing. But so, so, so tell us about your plan. Tell us about your idea. Tell us about your group. Well, you know, let me, let me address something that you just, that you just mentioned, because I think that is, you know, for, for folks like us that have engaged in the protection of the Constitution for years now, uh, you know, that's, that's a legitimate concern. You know, what happens if, you know, we get to the other side of this independence, and we wind up with the, the same old Uncle Sam Jr. in the driver's seat. And that is entirely dependent upon the, the people. You know, Article One, Section 2 of the Texas Constitution says that all political power is inherent in the people. I mean, that's a sentiment that was echoed in the Declaration of Independence. It is a foundational principle, uh, both that uh, led the 13 colonies to secede from Great Britain, led Texas to secede from Mexico, and it's, you know, part of the contract between Texas and the rest of the states when Texas entered the Union. So this, this concept of all political power being inherent in the people is not just some kind of dusty old principle. It really is a call to action for all of those people out there that believe in the principles of freedom and rights to get involved. And the only thing that is going to prevent this, this march toward globalism is for people that listen to your program, people that listen to other programs, people that believe in these principles of freedom and independence to stand up and take action. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and the group itself. Sure. We are the, we are the largest and the oldest organization dedicated to Texas independence and the principles of freedom. Uh, you know, we have been engaged in this debate uh, for a very long time. And beyond that, you know, in the more recent examples, uh, we were very active in working on getting HCR 50 passed, which is the sovereignty resolution here in Texas. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that thing needed a lot more teeth than it really had. But, you know, given that we're having to spoon feed a lot of these guys in the legislature, uh, it was definitely an accomplishment. Yeah, for those that don't know, uh, uh, Texas did pass the resolution saying we're not under federal control and the states created the feds. Yeah, and, it, you know, it basically just were, it, it was a reminder you know, which I guess is, is the best that we could hope for out of some of these guys in the legislature, seeing as how, you know, they were more fixated on trying to get toll roads passed than anything else. Uh, but but it, was, it was a step in the right direction so that we have some sort of measuring stick to hold these guys accountable to. Because at the point that the federal government oversteps its constitutional authority, which guaranteed it's done uh, many, many times since the House passed that resolution, uh, then the legislators are all of a sudden on the hook. Hey, did you pass it and not mean it? I mean, was it just pillow talk? And that's, in essence, what uh, what the, the whole crux of HCR 50 was. Well, that and would be an amazing, exactly, that would be an amazing message to the globalists, because there is no you know, federal republic anymore, is to have Texas and a few other states break off, and then that would really get everybody's attention that, hey, if the feds are illegitimate. They're out of control. Can you imagine how great Texas would be with a 100-mile-an-hour speed limit, cut the government down to almost nothing. All the business would move in here. It would, it, oh, you know, open Vermont uh, Second Amendment, you know, open carry. Just, you know, I mean, just, oh, I'd love it. Absolutely. Really? I mean, I want Wild West, libertarian all the way. This place, I mean, it would, it would just be awesome. Well, Alex, let me let me throw this at you because I think this is important for you to understand uh, about what this means and for all the listeners out there. If this means for the first time ever that people here in Texas have a say in how they are governed, you know, we have we have dealt with you know people are concerned about global encroachment in, in the United States government, folks. It's here. I mean, it's it's here. We're already uh, conquered. That's a fact. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, I mean, if we're going to get are, the country back, we got to admit we are totally controlled by offshore banks. Go ahead. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about it. I mean, anyone who thinks that the globalists are going to take over the United States needs to wake up and realize that it's been done. You know, the United States, the bankers, the globalists. I mean, the, the United States is the muscle for these guys, and, and this is this is really kind of the, the big issue that we have. And as Texans, we have to make a determination: is that something that we want to to stand for? Or do we want to go off on our own path? You know, when the Titanic is sinking, 
deck furniture sliding off the deck, and you've got a good lifeboat over here that, uh, you know, honestly has got a speedboat given the statistics for Texas and its economic viability. Uh, do, do you want to sit down and, and argue about the color of the drapes in the ballroom of the Titanic, or do you want to get the heck off the ship? Well, my only concern is the media will put a bunch of lunatics and camo waving guns around with gold crowns on their heads. I mean, just total white trash ne'er do wells. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then say that's who we are. How would? How are you going to try to differentiate? 